find the people who stand out The faceless crowd, lost and found Picking up on the speed of sound To faster ground, moving on I can't hold back all the new progress What I've done best, but how about now? Showing off all of the things we missed All your interests in 1939, Cars became the ultimate life form during his final fight with Joseph Joestar, gaining the abilities of every life form on Earth on top of all the other broken things he could already do. He was only defeated when a volcanic eruption sent him into space, which still didn't kill him by the way, and I know Jojo kind of made that happen, but I think most people believe he got at least a little lucky when he won against Cars. But anyway, Cars was sent into space, floating forever, unable to die, thinking about his loss to Jojo and his crimes on humanity forever. But, what if fate had a different plan? What if Cars returned to Earth after 62 years of isolation and nothing but his hate for humans and Joseph Joestar to occupy his mind? The story starts in 2002 when Jotaro Kujo is investigating reports of a strange boulder found off the shore of Japan. There's also been some stories of missing sailors around that area. Jotaro, feeling this could be the work of a stand user, asked the Speedwagon Foundation for a boat, some gear, and a few men to help him find out if it's nothing but rumors or just dangerous animals. But, as Jotaro gets closer to the stone, he starts to fear the worst. Even from the surface of the water, he can feel a sinister aura below him. Just get out of here if anything happens while I'm down there, Jotaro warns them while grabbing his scuba equipment. The men can tell they shouldn't question Jotaro and just say they'll wait as long as they can. So Jotaro dives into the water unable to see his target but he can feel it calling out to him drawing him towards it deeper into the darkness of the ocean. Jotaro notices an almost complete lack of wildlife around only seaweed and coral as far as he can see. He knows there should be a good amount of fish around here, or even just plankton, since he frequently swims the waters around Japan's shore for his work. But his train of thought is interrupted when he finally sees a large misshapen boulder. He cautiously floats closer as his sense of dread grows. From the few people that claim to have seen the boulder and lived, they all said it was a meteor that fell from the sky a few weeks ago and Jotaro was starting to believe them. But this did not put his mind at ease. He moves closer to take a final look, almost able to make out a face on the side of the rocky surface. When all of a sudden, spike-tipped tentacles extend out towards Jotaro, one even reaching around his arm and grabbing it. It's almost too quick for him to see, but nothing happens. The other tentacles never reach him. Yada yada, Jotaro thinks to himself as Star Platinum stands behind him. I'm still a little bit rusty. I can only keep time stopped for about four seconds. He thinks as he makes Star Platinum chop the tentacle, but it doesn't budge. He attacks it three more times until finally it breaks and gives him enough time to swim out of the meteor striking distance. As time starts to flow again, the tentacle grabs at the empty spot Jotaro used to be, but with no prey in its grasp, slinks back into their shell, almost disappointed. Jotaro takes the leftover tentacle still wrapped around his arm and detaches it, noticing it's almost filled with blood, and decides to take it with him in case it can answer any questions for him. But with the new information, Jotaro heads back to his boat, and decides he needs to call his grandfather, Joseph Joestar. He calls the foundation and tells them, I need to go to America, be sure to tell my family I'm going, I'll be gone for a while. Jotaro thinks to himself, if I'm right about what is happening, the old man will know better than anyone what we're dealing with. After arriving in New York, Jotaro heads to Joseph Joestar's house and tells him what happened in Japan. Are you positive it's him? Jotaro calmly asks, as Joseph slowly gets up from his chair and looks through the window at the night sky. I'm sure it is. I really thought he was gone for good. Joseph barely scratches out of his old tired voice. Also, we're going to need help from Josuke and his friend. Don't worry, I already called Josuke and I sent Koichi to Italy to get some more help for us. No, Joseph says, I'm talking about the other guy, the dumb one. We'll need him if Cars gets out of that rock. Jotaro walks over to Joseph and asks, Is Cars really that strong? Couldn't I just take him out with Star Platinum? I mean, you said he doesn't even have a stand. Joseph stops Jotaro saying, I don't think Star Platinum will even be able to hurt cars, and if he does, it'll only be for a second or just long enough to slow him down. I'm sorry I can't be much health, Jotaro, but I'll do whatever I can. 
Don't worry, I already called Josuke, and I sent Koichi to Italy to get some more help for us. So just wait here. I'll get the team together, then we'll come back and make a plan. So, as Josuke flies to New York to meet up with Josuke and Jotaro, Koichi was once again in Italy, looking for Giorno Giovanna. And after checking his old home, to no avail, a few locals notice him and ask, Why are you snooping around the boss's old house? Excited, Koichi asks, Are you talking about Giorno? And if so, can you take me to see him? The two men smile. Yeah, of course, friend. We'll take you where you need to go. Just follow us. Koichi gladly follows, commenting on how he really doesn't know anybody in Italy and actually only talked to Giorno a few times, so it's been hard finding him. The men seem more and more excited and quickly lead Koichi around the back of a nearby building, assuring him that Giorno works around here. But when they reach the end of the alley, one guy pulls a gun and the other pulls a knife and begins laughing. Koichi responds almost bored. I don't think your boss is going to like this. I've got important things to talk to him about. What? The little guy thinks he's tough and is trying to scare us? The two thugs say. Giorno's not even our boss. He does run the city, but some of us like the ways it used to be when we could do whatever we wanted. Yeah, he kicked us out when we wouldn't stop robbing tourists like you. But what he doesn't know won't hurt him. Give us all you got and we won't ask again. Koichi sighs. Hmm. Echoes, Act 3. The thug with the gun is slammed to the ground and screams out in pain. What the hell is going on? While the gangster with the knife looks at his friend in terror. Koichi knocks him to the ground with his bare hands and kicks the knife out of his reach and asks them both, Where's Giorno Giovanna? But a man he's never seen before calls out from the street. Why is a stand user looking for Giorno? Koichi calls back his stand and lets both men run away as quickly as they can. Koichi turns to the mysterious figure and says, I need to talk to him. His family needs him. The Giorno I know doesn't want anything to do with his family, and most stand users looking for him aren't trying to just talk. Baka, Koichi says, I just need to talk to Giorno, not some thug looking for a quick buck. If you're not going to tell me where he is, I'll find him myself. Koichi starts to walk away, and the mysterious man says, I'm sorry, but I can't just let that happen. Mista calls out his stand sex pistols and lifts his gun, but doesn't shoot. Koichi calls out, echoes Act 3 again, as Mista says, I can't just let you walk up to Giorno. I won't kill you, but I will stop you. Mista shoots three bullets and sends number 1, 6, and 3 out, making two go straight for Koichi's leg. In response, Koichi freezes both bullets to the ground. Number 6 kicks the third bullet, making it strike the building Koichi was standing against, causing bricks to fall towards him. Koichi rolls out of the way and hides by a large dumpster. Mista shoots the rest of his bullets at the dumpster and lets his stand reload the gun for him. Koichi calls back his stand and changes it to Act 2 and writes crack on the wall, making a hole for him to escape through. He grabs a soda can from inside the warehouse and gets ready for Mista to follow. Mista shoots two bullets through the window and his stand send them straight to Koichi. The first misses but the second hits his foot. Mista walks into the warehouse and looks for Koichi, but only sees the blood stain and something else written on a wall behind him. Then Koichi throws the can, hitting the words his stand wrote on the wall, causing a rush of air to hit Mista, knocking him over. Koichi grabs a tarp covering some boxes and marks it with his stand and switches to Act 3, then runs towards Mista, who shoots three more bullets his way. Act 3 tries stopping the bullets, but 6 and 5 kick two of them away. Then, number one sends one back at Koichi, and two sends the other one behind Koichi. Mista then shoots his last bullet with number three's help, forcing it to ricochet off the bullet behind Koichi and bouncing straight for Koichi's back. This bullet is barely stopped by Act 3, and the bullets heading for Koichi's chest connects with only the sheet in front of them to protect him. Koichi falls to the ground, but the bullets bounce back at Mista full force and hit his shoulders, making him drop his gun. How did he reflect my bullet, Mista thinks, until he sees that Koichi used his stand to write bounce on the tarp. Koichi gets up and walks towards Mista and uses Act 3 to hold him down. Now, tell me where Giorno Giovanna is. Mista laughs. You're going to have to do more than that to make me talk. Koichi sighs. Fine, just don't get in my way then. I will find Giorno one way or the other. You're going to be stuck there until my stand gets out of range. Koichi warns Mista as he limps away feeling he has already won the fight. 
But number one and two kick the gun to Mista, having already reloaded it, and now, barely able to move, Mista shoots all his bullets at Koichi. The bullets all hit Koichi's back, forcing him to fall to the ground. No longer able to concentrate, he releases his stand. Mista, hurt and bloody, tries to get up, but is unable to. He lies on his back and grabs his phone to call Giorno. Hey boss, I found a stand user looking for you. We're both pretty hurt, but still alive. He wanted to talk to you, so if you're interested, come by and pick us up. I'll be okay, but I don't know if he will. Giorno thanks Mista for watching his back and tells him he's on the way. Just be careful, boss. This guy was pretty strong, so if he was with anyone, they could cause problems. Don't worry, Mista. You did good. Just rest. I'll be there in five minutes. Giorno hangs up the phone and rushes to Mista's location. Mista looks back at Koichi, thinking about the battle. Maybe I should have listened to him. This guy seems alright. I wonder if he really wasn't going to try and finish me off. Well, either way, I hope Giorno has time to heal him. Mista wakes up in the gang hideout, fully healed, and thanks Giorno for patching him up. Hey boss, what happened to that other guy? Did you make it in time? Yeah, Koichi is fine. I healed him up before you, and he's just getting cleaned up now. So he was telling the truth? He did know you? Yeah, it's complicated. He knows some of my distant family. I guess there's some big trouble going on and they want my help. Really? Mista says. Wow, sorry. I thought he was just another one of Diavolo's old men. Koichi chimes in. Baka, I told you to listen to me. Mista again apologizes for shooting him in the back and asks Giorno, What's a Baka? Giorno just ignores him before Koichi apologizes in return, saying, Don't worry about it. I'm sorry too for cracking your ribs and breaking your leg. Mista again looks at Giorno, who shakes his head, confirming Koichi's words. Koichi continues and asks Giorno, So, will you come with me to America to meet up with the Joe Stars?" Giorno seems deep in thought before saying, I don't know yet. Things do seem serious and all, but there's just so much still here in Italy I need to fix. And if I'm gone for even a second, some new group will try to take it from me. But Giorno, he could take over the whole world if we don't stop him. Mista looks even more confused, asking, What kind of problem do you guys need help with anyway? Vampire aliens, Giorno says, with a straight face. Mista bursts out laughing and looks at Koichi, waiting for the real answer. Wait, are you guys serious? What kind of family do you have, Giorno? Koichi asks again, Please, we need all the help we can get, and it still might not be enough. Giorno sighs, Okay, I'll help. But I'm going to need the Speedwagon Foundation to make a small donation to the city in my name. Koichi doesn't know whether to laugh or take him seriously, but Giorno doesn't budge. I'll talk to Jotaro about that for you, but I'm sure he wouldn't mind helping. Alright Koichi, we have a deal. Mista, I want you and Trish to watch over things for me until I'm done. No way, Mista interrupts. I want to go with you and fight by your side again. Mista, I need you here to watch over everything we worked for. We can't just risk losing control of the city. But Giorno, Trish can handle it while we're gone. Nobody will even know you left. Besides, I've risked my life for you before. It's nothing to do it again. Giorno looks at Mista. I can't stop you, can I? No, boss. I told you. I got your back, and it seems you'll need all the help you can get. You're a good friend, Mista. Thank you for coming with me. I'll ask Trish to watch over things for us while we're gone. Okay, boss. I'll give Fugo a call, too. Koichi is happy they agreed to come and tells them the Speedwagon Foundation will pay for their tickets to New York, where they can meet Jotaro and Joseph. Koichi calls Jotaro and tells him the good news. Great, I knew I could count on you, Koichi. Josuke will be here any time now, so get back as soon as you can. Little did they know it was already too late. After gaining enough energy from the wildlife and fishermen in the area, Cards burst from his cage in disbelief, looking at his surroundings trying to figure out what was going on. How long has it been? Am I back on earth? He flies out of the water and sees the Japanese shore and though he doesn't recognize it, he knows he's back on earth. He decides to play it safe to avoid a repeat of his last defeat. He swims to shore and finds new clothes in case anyone would remember him or if his old foe Joseph had anything planned for his return. Cars knows he is easily still stronger than anyone else on earth but wants to have a full plan ready before anyone can retaliate or get lucky again. 
I'll make a new mask and start making new vampires to serve me. Then I'll find whoever is running things and start making my demands. Cars finds an old abandoned building to make his lair and he starts his quest to assemble the new stone mask. That same day, Josuke and Okeyasu arrive at Joseph's door. Jotaro has already explained how dire the situation is and they are both ready for anything. Jotaro answers the door and thanks them for coming all the way to America. No problem, Josuke says. If it's going to be this bad, we all need to do whatever we can to help. Joseph slowly walks over to Josuke. I'm so proud of you. Your mother really did such a great job of raising you. Josuke, kind of annoyed but still respectfully, thanks Joseph for the compliment and asks Joseph what should we do first while we wait for the others to get here. I'll start by showing you the basics of Hammond. What's Hammond? Okiasu asks before Josuke can speak. Jutro, explain while I get myself ready, Joseph says. Okay, old man. Hammond is basically using your body to make the same energy as the sun, and it is used to kill vampires. Both Okiasu and Josuke looked amazed as they listened to Jutro continue his explanation. You'll have to learn to control your breathing, and the rest we'll discuss when you're ready. Okeyasu starts breathing faster. I think I can do it a little already. I've always been really good at breathing, or at least that's what people tell me. Joseph interrupts Okeyasu, saying, not like that, like this. As he steadies his breathing, everyone can feel the warmth of his hammond around them. You have to keep calm, no matter what, and stay focused for this to work. So this is what you'll need to kill cars, Josuke asks, feeling more confident about the task ahead of them. But the answer is sadly no. This won't stop Cars. He's grown too strong for this to work. But I'm sure he'll make a new vampire army to help him take over the world. And this will be able to kill them at least. Joseph, no longer able to keep his breathing steady, stops and sits down. Sadly, this is all I can do nowadays. Jotaro will have to help you from here. Joseph thanks them for coming and tells them if they need anything, come and get him. But he has to lay down for now. Jotaro then turns to the young men. I'm not that good at using Hammond, but I can get you started on the technique. It will be up to you to further develop it. And we'll keep practicing until Koichi and everyone else arrives. So, for the next 26 hours, Jotaro trains them in Hammond breathing. Jotaro improves slightly, becoming able to use it for longer than ever before. While Okiasu never comes close to learning Hammond breathing. But, Josuke learns almost immediately, and before long is even better than Jotaro, and is able to keep it up for several minutes longer than him. Jotaro tells him how Joseph was able to learn Hammond all by himself, and could almost do it his whole life, without ever being properly taught. Josuke brushes this off as a coincidence, and tells Jotaro, I must have just learned it so fast because you're a good teacher. But, with the others on their way from the airport, it was time for them to make a plan to go after cars. Jotaro also gets a call from the Speedwagon Foundation, telling him that the meteor in the ocean has disappeared. So they now know Cars is already a few steps ahead of them. So, time is running out. But, for Cars, his time has just begun. Koichi introduces Giorno, Mista, and Fugo to the others as everyone gets settled and updated on the current situation by Jotaro. Cars is gone, and could be anywhere in the world, but we at least have an idea of what he's doing. We believe he started making a new stone mask and some vampires to help him take over the world. Cars doesn't have much to fear. Joseph just got lucky before, and Cars knows that. But he was probably humbled a little, so he will try to do whatever he can to ensure his plan will work. Joseph steps forward. Also, he doesn't know what a stand is and can't see them, so that's an advantage we have even if the stands can't kill him. Also, I made a simple plan that I think can work. There's going to be two teams, one fighting cars and one making sure the other vampires don't interfere while we stop cars. Team 1 will be Jotaro, Giorno, Okeyasu, and Koichi. Team 2 will be Josuke, Mista, Fugo, and some volunteers from the Speedwagon Foundation. They have already made weapons that can take out vampires, so they are not the main problem. And if all the vampires are dead, everyone can fight cars together. Also, Josuke and Giorno, you two need to stay back and mainly assist. You two are the main ones who can heal injury. So, if you die, we lose. Giorno, your stand is very powerful, but with Cars being immortal, we don't know how to work on him. So, you're the last hope if all else fails. Same with Okeyasu, he can erase Cars, but I don't really trust him being able to without a lot of help. So, we won't use him until all the vampires are gone. 
Now, I'll go over everyone's roles individually and see if we can come up with an even better plan together. But, as Team JoJo's plan was coming together, so was Cars. With a new stone mass already made, his vampire army has started growing, and Cars sends them out to find anyone who could stop him, especially anyone related to Joseph. Car's followers also tell him what year it is and how things have changed since he was kicked off the earth. He was even able to learn that Joseph had children and Jothro's fight against Dio. Car sends a few vampires to infiltrate the Speedwagon Foundation to continue gathering as much information as possible and he even finds out where Joseph lives. So he decides to take him out as soon as possible. Cars isn't afraid of Joseph and the other Jojos but he can't get his loss to Joseph out of his mind. So, under the cover of night, Cars shifts his body into a disguise and heads to Joseph's home. Once I kill Jojo, I'll have his head on a spike. To remind me that I beat the only creature whose skill can compare to my own. Cars contorts and changes his body, sneaking into Joseph's home. He can sense two people's body heat inside, sleeping in separate rooms. I'm sure this bumbling fool doesn't even know I'm back. Should I kill him instantly, or take my time and make him suffer? I'll just slice him with my light blade, just for old time's sake. When he wakes up from the pain, I'll give him just enough time to know it was me who ended his sad old life. Cars summons his light blade and hovers over Joseph, ready to make the kill, when he's suddenly grabbed by someone and thrown back across the room. How do you like my hermit purple? Joseph says with his hand stretched towards Cars. Wait, what's going on? Cars replies, as Jotaro enters the room. Cars continues, it doesn't matter, you can't hold me now no matter what you try to do. But before Cars can escape, Jotaro brings out Star Platinum and freezes time. Okay, time to see what I can do to him. He takes a deep breath and unleashes his stand. He lands countless blows before time returns to normal. Cars is obviously confused and in pain, but still has no obvious injuries. I'm going to need more power, but we're right, he can't see what our stands are doing. Or counter my time stop. So, you aren't as helpless as I thought, and what is this strange power you have, Joseph? It's not Hammond, and it's not able to hurt me. But you must have forgot I'm immortal. You can't defeat me no matter how hard you try. We'll give you one chance to leave Earth before we do everything it takes to stop you. Jotaro, hit him again. Jotaro unleashes another attack with Time Stop, but still, any damage he does is instantly healed. Cars laughs. If this is all you can do, you two might as well give up. Jotaro can tell Joseph's power is fading and is about to release, but before he can stop time again, five vampires drop through the ceiling and grab Jotaro. They're so fast, he thinks, as they try to bite and attack him. But before they can infect Jotaro, Joseph wraps all of them up with his hermit purple and sends Hammond into their bodies, killing them instantly. But now released, Cars first strikes Jotaro to the ground. I don't know how you're attacking me, but I can feel your strength in every blow. I'll take care of you after Joseph. Cars leaps at the old man and begins absorbing him into his body. GG! Jotaro yells and stops time, but it's too late. Joseph is gone. He attacked with all his strength, and after time starts to flow again, the force of Jotaro's punches sends Cars through the walls and down to the streets below. Cars laughs, still barely harmed by the strikes, and mocks Jotaro. I'll catch up with you later, if my friends don't kill you first, as more vampires enter Joseph's home. For your sake, I hope they're nicer than I am with Joseph. Cars runs away into the night, as the vampires stop Jotaro from following after him. Jotaro and Star Platinum use Hammond and quickly take out the zombies. Then Jotaro calls Koichi and tells him to get the team together because Cars took Joseph and they need to act as quick as they can. Koichi promises to get everyone there as soon as possible as Jotaro decides what to do next. Cars returns to his lair in New York, happy that he completed this goal and orders the vampires around him to grab more humans for his army. While he waits, he wonders to himself, what were those strange invisible powers they were using? It felt as if Joseph wrapped some rope or vine around him and like Jothro was punching him while standing still. What powers could they have learned since I left? And do others have these powers? And I feel different after taking Joseph into my body. I feel like I could sense something helping Jothro, hitting me for him, but I couldn't see or hear it. Odd, but no matter. With stage 2 complete and my army almost ready, I'm ahead of schedule. Soon, I'll make myself known to the world and take my place as ruler. And next time I see Jotaro, I'll be sure to end him. 
With Joseph taken and most likely dead, Jotaro tries rallying the rest of the group, promising to kill cars and get everyone home safe. Josuke promises Jotaro he can count on him as everyone else gives their word that they will do their best to. Jotaro sends word to the Speedwagon Foundation to go find cars as quick as they can. We have to assume cars is still in New York, so you all should make teams and go with the Speedwagon workers to look for cars or any vampires. But I'm asking please, don't try to take him out by yourself. Me and Joseph couldn't even scratch him, so we can only do this as a team. They all head out together, but Josuke stays back to talk to Jotaro. I'm sorry I wasn't here to help you. Jotaro tells him, don't worry, we couldn't imagine cars could have found Joseph so fast, and I know you never got to see the good side of Joseph, so I understand you not wanting to stay here. Thanks for trying to make me feel better, Josuke says, but I know he was a good man, and he's my father, at least I shouldn't have let my personal feelings get in the way, and I won't let that happen again. I also want to be someone you can count on. Jotaro smiles, don't worry, I know I can count on you, and I believe with your help, we can beat him, and that will be enough for Joseph to rest in peace. Jotaro and Josuke stay at the house and talk as everyone else goes searching the city for any clues about cars. Giorno, Fugo, and Koichi find some local gangsters and question if they've seen anything strange lately, like any new guys trying to make moves in the city. The gangsters say, we're not snitches, but we are low on funds if you wanted to help out the cause. Giorno laughs and gives them a few hundred dollars, as Fugo tries telling him not to waste any time or money. But, the gangsters tell them they have seen a building that's been abandoned for a while, suddenly getting a lot of traffic. Our boss was planning on doing something about it, but he went missing a few days ago. Giorno thanks them, and then gets the directions to the building. As Fugo says, you should have just let me beat it out of them. Don't worry, Fugo. We need to keep a low profile. I'm sure Cars is looking out for us, just as we're looking for him. Koichi sends Reverb Act 2 out scouting the area and buildings for Cars as they head to the spot they were told about. Koichi finds the building and tells them people are down there for sure, but he doesn't know if it's Cars. Koichi then says we should go get Jotaro and the others. But Jorno tells him to relax. You haven't seen my new power. I can end this faster by myself. I should have taken cars out myself before Joseph had to die. But what's done is done. Fugo tells Jorno, I'm with you no matter what. Let's do this. Koichi continues trying to convince them to get Jotaro or some other help. Saying, let's not waste our chance if we have one. Koichi continues trying to convince them to get Jotaro. But Giorno tells him he doesn't plan on wasting any more time as him and Fugo sneak into the building. Koichi texts Jotaro their location and what the situation is before sending his stand to find some more backup for them. But follows after Giorno not wanting to leave him and Fugo alone. Together they sneak through the dark building finding nothing of note other than trash and signs that people have been living there. They open the door to a room leading deeper underground into an abandoned parking garage. They finally can hear people talking, and based off the conversation, they can tell it's some of Car's vampires. They try sneaking closer, but are grabbed by a stand, as they see purple vines wrap around them. Koichi looks back, ready to see Joseph, so they can take him home, but is shocked to see Car smiling at them. Thanks for coming, my army was getting hungry. Giorno is the first to call his stand out, but is completely stopped when Car sends a pulse of Hammond at Giorno, badly burning his skin. Fugo's stand comes out and releases his poison, knocking out several zombies coming after them and hurting Cars enough to let them go. Cars jumps out of the cloud. What is this poison he coughs out as he tries to compose himself? Koichi switches to Act 3 and tries holding Cars in place with his stand. Power, 3 freeze. Wow, another fascinating ability, Car says in a mocking tone. Giorno tries healing his wounds with golden experience, but is only able to close them and can't stop the pain. Cars is still able to move despite Koichi's stand and starts walking towards Giorno, who still can barely move from the Hammond attack. Fugo stands in front of Giorno ready to fight, but Koichi wanting to stall for help to arrive asks Cars, How did you get Joseph's stand? Cars laughs. Is that what these powers are called? Stands. Well, I gained this ability after absorbing Joseph into my body. Koichi gasps. What? You absorbed him? Does that mean he's dead? Dead, trapped, whatever you'd like to call it. 
just like I was. I figured it was a fitting fate for him after what he did to me. You're a monster, Koichi yells at Cars, and we're going to kill you. As Cars is distracted by Koichi, Fugo carries Giorno back to the surface, since Giorno is unable to walk. Koichi soon follows them up, still trying to hold Cars back with his stand, but is still only able to slow him down enough for them to remain out of reach. But when Fugo looks back, he can see Cars getting closer, and asks Koichi to take Giorno to safety, saying, You two go ahead, I'll hold off Cars as long as I can. Fugo summons his stand and releases more poison. This causes Cars to hesitate, but doesn't stop him for long. He shifts his arm into a wings and blows the poison towards Fugo, who is unable to get out of the way and is hit by the poison. Giorno stops Koichi and calls out to Fugo, but it's too late. The poison is already taking effect. Fugo tells Giorno, it's okay, I'll tell Bucharti and everyone else how good you're doing. Just beat this guy when you can. Koichi tries pulling Giorno forward, telling him we have to get out of here as Giorno tries calling out his stand but is too weak. Cars continues after them, but is stopped by Fugo grabbing onto his leg. I'm not finished with you yet, Fugo says, but Cars still tosses him aside. But this allows Purple Haze to land a punch and unleash the last of his poison in Cars' face, causing him to scream out in pain from the flesh-eating virus. Cars is only able to survive because of his ability to control every cell in his body and separates the poison cells from his own, but the damage is enough to blind him and take several minutes to heal before he is finally able to see again. Cars goes to finish off Fugo, but he is already dead. Very noble to sacrifice yourself to save your allies, but foolish, Cars says. With a power like yours, you might have stood a chance if not for all of your stupidity, walking in like you did. But still, with these powers, the humans might put up a decent fight. This will be interesting, and gives me hope to figure out more uses for this stand I stole from Joseph. Cars walks back into his lair and sees most of his vampires dead from Fugo's poison, and only a few left cowering away in the corner. He yells at them, gather more people as soon as the sun goes down, to replenish the vampires we lost, then goes back to planning his next move. As Koichi and Giorno escape the building, they are met outside by the speedwagon car and a few workers asking what happened. Koichi puts Giorno in the car and tells them to take them to Josuke. Back at Joseph and Jotaro's apartment, Josuke uses his crazy diamond stand to try and heal Giorno. He is able to help, but even he isn't able to fully heal Giorno, who can still feel the pain in his body and is having difficulty moving. Jotaro asks everyone else to leave so he can talk to Giorno, and as everyone does, Giorno begins apologizing. I know I should have waited. I thought I could handle this on my own without anyone else getting hurt. Jotaro is obviously angry, but tells Giorno he understands. I felt the same way, and I took risks like that at your age, so I won't act like I'm any better than you. I just wish this didn't have to happen. But, with everything Koichi told me, I'm glad we have more information about Karja's powers, and I'm sorry about your friend. I'm the one who should be sorry, Jorno tells Jotaro, wanting to take full responsibility. Then Jotaro asks, Do you know much about your father? No, not really, Jorno says. Does this matter right now? He asks in a confused way. It's important so you know why you're so hurt. Jotaro continues explaining the story of Jonathan, Dio, the stone mask, and the vampires to Jorno. So you see, Jorno, you're not a vampire, but you do have some vampire DNA in your body, so the Hammond attack must have had an even stronger effect on you. We need you, Giorno. You're one of the strongest on the team, so we need you to be ready and making the best decisions. That's the only way we're going to beat this freak of nature. So can I count on you? Giorno winces as he stands up. I'll need a few days to get better, but yes, you can count on me, Jotaro. We're a team, and we're going to do this for Fugo and for Joseph. After two weeks of cars remaining quiet, Jotaro and his team were growing more and more worried when they couldn't find any trace of him or his vampires. What was Cars planning? Where was he hiding? And when will he strike again? Josuke's and the others debate. But they use their time wisely and get used to fighting as a team and who they will be working with. With Giorno still not 100% and the death of Fugo, Josuke's team is forced to be one man down, so only him and Meester will be helping the Speedwagon Foundation fight the vampires 
and Jorno won't be able to fight at full strength against cars with Jotaro, Koichi, and Okeyasu. But the foundation finally has a lead on cars hiding out in the Niagara Falls Park, kidnapping tourists and making more vampires. With this information, they all leave the city and fly upstate to finally take out cars. Jotaro tells everyone, remember, we work as a team and we can do this. Cars is very strong, but he's not a god. I'm sure he knows we're coming and will be ready for us. But we're fighting for everyone on earth, not just ourselves. So we have to do everything possible to stop cars. Don't worry, Mista tells him. We all want to kick this guy's ass and we all know the plan. Giorno places his hand on Mista's shoulder. What Mista's trying to say is, we're all going to try our best and do what's best for the team. Just make sure your friend doesn't do anything stupid and we'll be okay, Koichi tells Giorno. Mista and Koichi argue while the plane lands and the Speedwagon Foundation gets ready and evacuates people from the area. The Foundation has UV weapons to fight off the vampires like the ones the Germans used when Joseph first fought cars. They even made special bullets for Mista that can conduct Hammond to help fight the vampires. Josuke was offered a weapon to help, but he decided to use his stand and his hammer, feeling that would be best for him. Everyone else talks over their strategy for cars as they wait for the vampires to attack. They know that as soon as the sun goes down, the fight will begin. Okeyasu says they should go looking for cars before the sun goes down, but Jotaro and Jorno warn him that cars probably would be ready for that and would have any advantage if they went looking for them in the forest. Plus. We don't want to be surprised by an ambush. So, with a base established and the sun down, they all stand ready for war. When they see a large man standing against the night, call out to them. You all are so bold that you followed me here to fight? Well, I'll give any of you one last chance to leave or join me before I send my vampires to kill every one of you. Nobody moves or speaks. The Foundation men stand ready with Jotaro and his team, willing to fight. Okay, I warned you, Cars yells out. Go kill them all as a wave of vampires run down the hill. The Foundation turns on their UV lights and hit a large group of vampires, stopping them as more come from the shadows behind them. More of the Foundation fighters go to fight the vampires with Mista using his stand to send the special bullets in to as many vampires as they can. Josuke fights off several vampires too while healing any of the people hurt by the vampires. Jotaro and his team keep an eye on cars, waiting for their chance to attack. Slowly, more and more vampires attack the group, and more and more people are turned into zombies. Josuke tells Mister to cover him while he heals who he can. Mister follows Josuke, shooting every vampire he sees. They both kill so many vampires and zombies, cars grows angry, gathering what vampires he has left, and starts walking to the battlefield. As he gets closer, he uses a piece of his body to create a humanoid monster that goes after the rest of the Foundation members, quickly killing most of them. Koichi, following the plan, brings out his stand and tries slowing down Cars with three freeze. Again, he's able to slow him down some, but Cars is still strong enough to resist most of the weight added to him. Jotaro brings out Star Platinum to distract Cars with a flurry of quick punches. As Cars goes to defend himself from Jotaro's attack, Okeyasu sneaks behind Cars and tries erasing him with his stand. As he gets closer, Cars notices and brings out the hermit purple stand he stole by absorbing Joseph's body and tries blasting Okeyasu with a tentacle and Hammond. Jotaro is barely fast enough to stop time and save Okuyasu before time unfreezes. Cars laughs. A nice attempt, but maybe you see now that it's useless, no matter what little tricks you have, it won't be enough. While Jotaro and the others try a new plan, Josuke and Mista still fighting the last of the zombie vampires. When they're faced with the monster cars created, which is now after them, it lunges at Mista who unloads his clip into the human looking monster. It reacts but isn't stopped until Josuke's stand knocks it away. It seems to be a part of Cars, but it's not as strong as him, and he's not controlling it, just letting it run wild. I don't think it notices my stand either, Josuke tells Mista. I think you're right, Josuke, and if it's part of Cars, I don't think we can kill it, but maybe we could trap it? Good idea, Mista. Let's go. The monster again chases after them, so they lead it to a nearby mountain. What are you going to do, Mista asks. Don't worry, you just have to act like the bait. 
and stay right there. Josuke replies as he leaves Mista standing by the mountain's wall. Wait, what? The monster tries attacking Mista, but again, Josuke saves him with his stand. Josuke punches the beast and the mountain, forcing them to become one with his crazy diamond stand. After a few punches, the monster is completely stuck in the wall, unable to move. Wow, Mista says. How'd you do that? Josuke tells him, I've had practice with it before, but let's go help Jotaro and the others. Josuke arrives just soon enough to heal a hurt Okiasu. Thanks, Josuke. I'm sorry, I just can't get close enough to him. He reads my every move so easy, and Jotaro can't save me every time. It's okay, Okiasu. We're all trying our best. Let's keep going. Right, Josuke. Let's go. You mortals always surprise me. Cars looks at Josuke. You think because you stopped that monster you can stand against me? He jumps over them and to the mountain, placing his hand on it and reabsorbing his missing body part. You see, there's nothing you can do to stop me. Cars stands laughing maniacally and uncontrollably. Jorno asks Josuke what he did to trap that piece of cars into the mountain. And with the information Josuke tells him, he makes and tells everyone a new plan to defeat Cars. Cars jumps at them, screaming, whatever your plan is, it's pointless. He starts fighting the group, with Jorno taking on Cars with his golden experience. As Cars twists and contorts his body, fighting back at full strength, Josuke and Jotaro waiting for the cue to jump into the fight. Jorno tells Koichi to get as close and put as much weight as he can on top of Cars. Koichi sends his stand right on Cars' back, slowing him down as much as possible. Jorno and Josuke stand, punch cars as hard as they can, knocking him over. Jotaro freezes time and uses Star Platinum to throw cars into a nearby tree, and gets Josuke as close as he can to cars. When time unfreezes, Josuke again tries trapping cars' body in the object, and is slowly succeeding. You fools, cars thinks. This can't hold me. I control every aspect of nature. But as he tries to get out, Koichi uses his gravity crushing the tree to a smaller size and keeping cars from breaking out. Now, Jorno yells, as Okayasu is finally able to get close enough to swipe the tree with his hand and start erasing it. With cars seconds from being completely erased, Jorno wonders if his requiem is now taking effect, making cars infinitely relive this moment, or maybe stopping time with cars helplessly waiting forever to be erased. But, for everyone but Cars, the battle is over. Okiasu's hand erases every trace of Cars from the earth, so he can never hurt anyone again. In a moment of relief, everyone looks at each other, wondering if it truly is over. Okiasu bursts out in tears of joy. I did it! I got him, Josuke! Everyone cheers and Mista adds, we did it. Jotaro then looks at his team and thanks them. I truly couldn't have done this without you, he says. Josuke and Jorno both go to him, telling him Joseph would be proud of how he led the team and we needed you just as much as you needed us. But with their mission complete, they all go back to their normal lives, remembering the battle and friendship they had together. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you did, as always, remember to like, comment, and subscribe so you can help the channel grow. I'm really close to getting the watch time and views I need to do YouTube full time. So hopefully we can get there soon. So until next time, I'll talk to you all later. Have a great day.